Hey there everyone, we know that you share with us a love of travel, especially in an RV. However, many of you are concerned about the expenses involved, especially those of you who are looking to become full-time RVers and make traveling a lifestyle. So we have compiled a list of 10 ways that we save money while RVing. The first tip on how to save money while RVing is actually the most important one, and it was given to us by Thomas and Stacy with I'm Not Lost From RVing, who we're caravanning with right now. And that tip is to track your expenses. Tracking your expenses is essential to saving money because if you don't know where your money is going, then how can you begin to cut down on those non-necessary expenses? And the easiest way to track your expenses is to create a very simple spreadsheet that just has very broad categories like food groceries, uh, car maintenance, RV maintenance, maybe pet expenses if you have pets, uh, restaurants, you know, stuff like that. And then each month you will just add up your expenses by either uh, collecting your receipts or just looking at your credit card statements or your bank statements. And then you can fill in those categories to see exactly how much money you're spending on them. And now once you have tracked your expenses, you can begin to cut down on the non-necessary expenses that you're looking to reduce. For example, say you find out in the first month that you're spending $200 a month uh, going out to restaurants. And your goal, however, let's say, is that you only wanna spend $60 a month going out to eat at restaurants. You can then input in one of those cells $60 a month next to the restaurants category, and then you can uh, you know, track your expenses each month with that goal right there looking at you right in the face, and you can see as each month as you begin to cut that down and reach your goal. And this is actually budgeting, you know, setting for yourself expense goals for individual categories and trying to be at or below them. It might be tempting to go out to eat at a restaurant, especially while you're traveling, but this has been a major way that David and I have saved money, and that is using our kitchen in our RV. Now, I know that it can be a lot more difficult to use the kitchen in your RV because let's say your stove only has three burners like ours. We've even seen ones where they only have one or two burners. And I know that that could be really frustrating, especially when you're trying to cook for every single meal, especially if you have a teeny tiny little sink for all those dishes and you're doing dishes all the time. I understand that it can be really frustrating, but we have found that when we cook our own food in the trailer, versus going out to a restaurant to eat where we're spending roughly two dollars per person per meal versus when we go out to eat at a restaurant we're spending on average 25 sometimes 30 dollars with tip for the both of us just for one meal so for us that's been one of the major ways we've been able to save money is to cook most of our meals in the rv this next tip piggybacks kind of off of what Jenny just recommended, and that is not only should you be cooking as many meals at home as you can, but you should also be building a collection of low cost, but healthy and hearty recipes. Like Jenny mentioned, our typical cost per serving when we cook at home is around $2. However, that is usually when we're including you know, meat in, like shrimp or fish. So that really raises the cost of the meals that we cook at home. However, we can get our cost per serving down even to a dollar per serving if we are omitting those more expensive meats. For instance, one of the recipes that we got from Thomas and Stacy from I'm Not Lost From RVing is a really inexpensive chili recipe that only uses vegetables and beans. And then another of our low cost recipes is breakfast burritos. You know, it's our go-to, we love it. It's super easy. It only includes eggs, onions, potatoes, and cheese, and a tortilla. So it's super easy to make and very low cost, but delicious. And then the kicker to these low cost, but still healthy and hearty recipes is for us RVers, try to find ones that only use one pot. If you can cook these recipes using only one skillet or one pot, it just makes cleanup so much easier. You know, I know a lot of you guys are like us and you don't have dishwashers in your RVs, and then many of you maybe have very small sinks. So if you can only use one pot or one skillet to cook these recipes, it just makes it so much easier, so much more convenient to cook at home, so you're not looking to go out to eat as much and you can save a ton of money. 
And to find these recipes, it's really easy. Just Google search, you know, single pot, single skillet, low cost, but healthy meals. And I'm sure you'll be able to find just a ton out there. Another huge way that you can save money while RVing is to perform regular maintenance on the parts of your rig that need it. It is a lot cheaper to just perform regular maintenance than it is to wait for something to break and then have to replace it. Examples of maintenance that you can perform on your rig to save you a lot of money in the long run is to replace the anode rod in your water heater tank at least once a year. Uh, repack your wheel bearings on your axles at regular intervals that are recommended by the manufacturer. And another thing that we do is we apply a rubber seal conditioner to the seals on our windows, door, and storage bay doors. And what we use on our RV to protect our rubber seals is the three-in-one RV Care rubber seal conditioner. It protects all types of rubber seals, including slide outs, windows, doors, and storage compartments. It's long lasting, water resistant, it reduces friction and wear, and the big thing is that it protects against UV damage. Over time, as your rubber seals are exposed to the elements and UV rays, they'll begin to fade, can become brittle, and crack, which will require require you to replace these seals. However, if you regularly use a rubber seal conditioner, it will greatly extend the life of the rubber seals on your RV. It's very simple to use. Simply spray the seal conditioner directly onto your rubber seals, and then using any cloth, just simply wipe away the excess and spread it around all over the seals. So performing regular maintenance like this on your RV will save you a ton of money in the long run. A great way we've been able to cut some costs is by finding free places to fill our drinking water and dump our waste tanks. And the resource that I have found, which is an excellent resource, I use it every time now, is rvdumpsites.net. Before we found this resource, we were spending somewhere between $10 and $25 every time we had to fill our fresh water and dump our tanks because we were finding places like truck stops where, you know, it's $10 on average to dump your tanks there or we were stopping at state parks on our way to our next destination and the day use fee is normally what you pay to get into those and it can be anywhere from you know five dollars to forty five dollars to do the day use fee so using a resource like rvdumpsites.net and finding free places to dump has really opened up our eyes as to how easy it is to find free dump and normally we find free dump at places like uh, fairgrounds, a lot of those are free, some of them are paid, but for the most part everyone we've gone to is free. A lot of county parks will let you use their dump station for free. There are also gas stations that if you buy fuel there, their dump station is free or is at a severely reduced price. And then there are places like Utah where if you just find a Maverick gas station, a lot of times they have an RV dump station that is completely free and they have fresh drinking water, all that good stuff for you. A huge way that Jenny and I save money while traveling in our RVs is staying at free campsites, boondocking in the national forests and BLM land. Typically, an RV park is gonna charge you around $30 a night to stay there. So, you know, if you're a full-time RVer like us, this really, really adds up extremely fast. I mean, think about it. Uh, if there's 365 days in a year and you're spending $30 a night every single night, you're spending way over $9,000 a year. So what Jenny and I do is we find free camping boondocking sites just like this awesome site, primarily in National Forest, but we also stay on BLM land in the winter when we're staying down south, like in Arizona and Southern California, where there's a ton of BLM land, but not very many National Forests. The stay limit is typically around 14 days. So you get two weeks at a time before you have to move on to the next site. And we love it, you know, we would do this even if it wasn't free. The National Forest and BLM land are gorgeous. We love being surrounded in nature as opposed to, you know, jammed into these tiny little RV park sites where the next RV is like, this far from you, you know, you can hear the people talking in the RV next to you and they can hear you, you know, because the walls are so thin. We love it out here. And the kicker is that it's free. It costs us nothing. 
Again, this is a massive reason that we're able to afford living this lifestyle is being able to camp for free. We save an incredible amount of money because almost every single campsite we stay at is a free boondocking location. And a lot of you may be a little you know, confused on how we're able to find these sites. Uh, but the resources we use are freecampsites.net is the number one we use. And then we also rely on campendium.com as a secondary resource. So check out those two websites and that will really help you guys find free camping of your own. And if you wanna see how we use those resources and by we, I really mean Jenny, she's like our free campsite finding queen. Uh, she made a nice long video that goes really in depth. It shows a screen recording of her laptop as well, her going through these websites and finding those campsites. So I'll go ahead and you know drop a link right there for you guys to check out that video if you're interested. Now boondocking and dry camping are great options for us to save money, but I know that there are a ton of you out there that like having electrical hookups. You like having the unlimited water that staying at an RV park allows you. And therefore that may not be a realistic way for you to save money. You know, you don't have solar on your trailer. You don't have the ability to go two full weeks without stopping somewhere to dump. And so for you, it may be much more realistic to stay in an RV park. But if you're traveling often, then that $30 average is is a very realistic number and spending nine thousand plus dollars a year to stay in an RV park is the most expensive way to travel so a way to reduce that cost for you would be to take advantage of weekly and monthly rates at RV parks instead and there are even some RV parks that offer you seasonal rates if you're going to be staying for three whole months or six whole months at a time then you can get an even bigger discount and that'll save you a good chunk of money now our next tip on how to save money while RVing kind of leads off of what Jenny just talked about, and that is to travel less often. If you travel less often, not only will you, will you be able to take advantage of the weekly, monthly, and seasonal RV park rates, but you'll also save money on fuel costs, wear and tear to your tow vehicle if you have one, or wear and tear to your motorhome and your trailer. Now for us, fuel expenses that are incurred from traveling from site to site is our second largest expense behind food. So if we, were to travel even less often than we do right now, we would be able to save a lot of money on fuel. We only move uh, tw every two weeks, but we still spend just over $300 a month on diesel fuel for our truck. On top of that $300 a month, the, the more often that we're traveling, that means we have to do oil changes on the truck more often, uh, you know, transmission fluid and uh, differential fluid changes more often. It wears out our brakes more. We have to worry about the brakes on our trailer as well as tire wear for the trailer and the truck. You know, the list goes on for all of these expenses that are incurred because of traveling. You know, the IRS uh, estimates that it costs 51 cents a mile to drive a vehicle. 51 cents, guys. So, you know, if you're putting 20 or 30,000 or 20 or 30,000 miles on a vehicle every year, it's estimated that that's costing you 15,000. Uh, you know, 10 or $15,000 a year. And that is a lot of money that can be saved merely by staying in a location longer. This next point I'm gonna talk about is surprisingly about food because we've already talked about food twice and how you can save money in regards to food. But you know what? Food's important, guys. And I'm actually really hungry right now. I could totally eat. <laughs> but this one I'm gonna talk about is actually for when you're hooked up to electricity. And it is to use electrical cooking appliances during those times. So for example, we have something called a Cuisinart. It's this really nice folding griddler. And we also have an Instant Pot. And we use those when we have electrical hookups when we're staying with friends and family. Now we have solar. So when we have a full sun day, we can also use both of these appliances. And using these appliances really saves on our propane costs. We also have larger propane tanks, so we don't worry too much about running out of propane, but propane can be expensive over time, especially if you're using it nonstop for every single 
you know, meal that you're cooking. But if you have electrical appliances that you can use instead and you have the ability to use them, there is a, that's a way that you will save money. If you're already paying for those electrical hookups or if you're staying at friends and family and they're not charging you for those electrical hookups, then that is an excellent way to save money on having to refill your propane. And the last tip that we have for you guys on how to save money while RVing is to do as many free or low cost attractions as possible as opposed to the more expensive touristy type trap stuff. For Jenny and I, since we're already camping out on the National Forest or BLM land, there is almost always some sort of really awesome National Forest hike or BLM hike or historical site in the area that we can visit and it almost never costs anything. However, if you're looking to go to the national parks or national monuments and you're going to be visiting multiple of those in a year, it's an excellent idea to purchase the America the Beautiful Pass. It's only $80 and it lasts an entire year and seniors get a discount as well as veterans. So, you know, if you don't just want to visit the National Forest and you wanna get into the most beautiful and epic areas that our country has to offer, the national parks and monuments, definitely get that pass. And after only three entrances, I believe, into the park, it pays itself off. And not only does it pay for national parks and monuments, but uh, there are many national forest hikes that do charge a day use fee. And almost always the America the Beautiful Pass gets you into those free as well. So that's it. Those have been the 10 major ways that we save money while RVing. But don't get me wrong, there are not only 10 ways to save yeah. money while RVing. And we know that there are tons of you out there that know of other ways that we definitely don't know about. I've heard that there are like fuel rewards where you can save a massive chunk of money on that. I know that there are like shower rewards if you don't have a, a shower in your RV that you can get free showers at places. Mm -hmm. I know that there are like um, gym rewards if you if you want to be part of a gym membership and you can shower there. I know that there are just so many options out there. So if you guys would be just super awesome and share those extra ones down in the comments below so that those are resources for people to save money too, that would be awesome. Yeah, I'm sure that we could learn something from you guys too. Yes. But that is all for us. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.